Hi there everyone, it's Cassie. Welcome back for another video here on my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be playing with some mixed media and some Simon Hurley Create products. This is the new handwritten background. I have been dying to use this one in mixed media. And we're also going to be using the leaf prints. This does have a matching die. I won't be using that today, but just know that it's there. And then we're also going to be using this beautiful blooms. And this one does have matching dies also, and I am going to be using those. So yeah, really excited about this and then we have some of this distress mixed media heavy cardstock now this stuff is great because I don't always want to use watercolor paper you know and I want something fairly smooth and so this stuff is super smooth but it can hold up to the mixed media water or whatever it is you're using paint so that's why I wanted to give this stuff a try and I have been pretty impressed all right, I've got out a tonic mat and I'm gonna put down some colors we've got our distress oxide peeled paint we also have some iced spruce, and then I am using some chipped sapphire in distress ink. Okay, and just kind of swirling that around with my fingers just a little bit, and then I'm gonna put my paper right up into it. And those colors are pretty bold. The Using the distress oxides is going to make that a little bit bold like that, and a little bit chalky looking, and I'm so far really loving this color combination. So I'm going to put my paper back in there. This is, of course, how we build up our texture if you've been watching my channel at all over the last few weeks, I've been slightly obsessed with just ink smushing again. And I, you know, I go in phases, I guess. <laughs> but I'm pretty excited. So I like this background. We're going to spray a little bit of Distress Spray Stain in the color Speckled Egg. Swirl that around a little bit, even after just putting a little bit of water on there. And then we're going to clean that up and hit that with our heat tool again. So this background is really starting to look very cool. But then I want to bring in some weathered wood distress ink and I'm using a blending ink and just kind of blending that on the edges to add a little bit more distressing to it and even just putting a little bit in that background to kind of cover up some of that cream. I'm pretty excited about that. And then now I'm going to be using a little bit of water. So we're going to spritz just tiny, well not tiny droplets, bigger droplets and I'm using my distress sprayer for that. Let that sit for a few seconds, and then I will bring in a microfiber cloth and wipe that up. So this is this is where I'm wanting it. Hit that again with the heat tool, and then we're going to bring in some archival ink. Now, because I want to do mixed media, and I don't want to mess up what I'm doing with the background, I'm going to use the archival ink. That will make it waterproof. So I've just inked that background up just a bit. I didn't go too crazy, wasn't trying to make sure that it was all completely covered. And then I put my paper right on top of it. Now, because this is archival ink, I do wanna make sure that's also nice and dry before I bring in those distress embossing glazes. You can see I have three of them up there, but I just wanna make sure everything on this background is nice and dry before I bring those in because they will stick to whatever is a little bit wet. Playing around with these leaf prints i decided to bring in this long one and i'm going to bring in one of the simon hurley create big old blocks and i'm going to ink that up with some embossing ink the embossing glazes that i have up there if you've never played with these i know i'm kind of late to the party here I'm a little bit late to the party on a lot of things lately but <laughs> um, if you haven't played with these they are so much fun they are not opaque they are translucent which makes them different than just regular embossing powders uh, I am going to stamp that down and then I am going to pick up that powder. So the powders that I have are chipped sapphire, peeled paint, and weathered wood. And I did use my fingers and you'll also notice there was a little bit of ghosting because my stamp must have pounced onto the background more than once. But I'm not concerned about that because I can wipe away whatever I don't want with like a, a paintbrush. I, like I said, I'm using my fingers, as you can well see, and just kind of pouncing the powder around. I'm going to tell you, I don't love using my fingers. It is a texture issue for me. I don't love it. It works in a pinch, but don't don't really like sticking my fingers in the powder and then trying to wipe that off. It just steam, seems to stick too much. So I think next time I do this, I will probably just use like a little spoon because, again, not loving how that feels all over my fingers. Everybody's different. Try it out. You may like it just fine, and it may not bother you, but I don't love it. <laughs> all right, so happy with how that is, but we are going to stamp it on the other side as well. I'm going to clean up my mess. You could save that if you wanted. It's a combination of all three of those powders, but I'm not going to. don't have all the containers for that. 
and it's just a little bit of powder, so I'm not worried about it. All right, so we're gonna ink that up again, and we're gonna stamp it upside down. And you'll notice when I did put the powders on there, I was trying to stick to the same type of color, that, like up there I'm using that weathered wood, or wait, is that one? Yeah, that one's the weathered wood. In the middle, I'm using the peeled paint, and on the bottom, I'm using the chipped sapphire. Just stick in that there. And then what's really cool about this, using these embossing glazes, is because they are translucent, all that you stamped behind there and all that you all the colors that you put behind there, they kind of show through, which is a really a pretty cool effect. So clean up my mess, close up my embossing glazes, and then we're gonna move on to doing a little bit of stamping. So I've brought out this stamp from the Beautiful Blooms. I'm gonna stamp that just once, and we are going to use archival ink because I wanna play around with a little bit more of the um, mixed media stuff. And I'm bringing in the Jet Black, and then we're going to ink that up. The first color I used was actually Faded Jeans, and that one tray of archival inks that you saw that's that's all I have I you know don't do a ton of mixed media so I just didn't see that it was necessary to get all the colors but I do love complete sets <laughs> and then you'll see yes I am bringing in the distress watercolor pencils I have only three sets I think I have four five and six is what I have and these babies are great I have other watercolor pencils and I think that's why I was kind of avoiding getting these to begin with, just because I was like, I have plenty of watercolor pencils. But in the end, I love to be matchy-matchy. I love that there are watercolor pencils, there are embossing glazes, there are distress oxides and inks and sprays all in the same color. I think that is fabulous. It just makes my little matchy-matchy heart so happy. So I did bite the bullet on a couple of these and got three of them. I like them enough. I may decide to get a few others, but for now, I think this this is okay. We can stick with just the three. So as you can see, there are a few ways to use the watercolor pencils. I've talked about that before. And there are full videos, not on my channel per se, but on other people's channels about using the watercolor pencils. So I encourage you to look those up. But you can just color right on the piece with your pencil. Or my favorite way is to take my water brush and grab the color from the pencil. That's just one of my favorite ways to do it. I've done that with the Nuvo watercolor pencils and also the Arteza watercolor pencils, and they're all great. These ones seem to be a little bit creamier, which is pretty nice also. It's a lot different than the other watercolor pencils that I have, but again, love the matchy-matchy of these, so we're just gonna keep playing. Once I'm done and happy with how that is, I will eventually hit that with a heat tool just to make sure that it is nice and dry. And then we're gonna take our matching die and put that right on top with a little bit of mint tape and run that through our die cutting machine. Love that there are matching dies for these. And then this is where I decide I'm gonna make two cards. So I tear it in half and I like the tear line. So we're gonna do it on this other side. That just adds that extra level of texture and then playing around with what we're gonna do with this. Like I said, I wasn't 100% sure how these cards were gonna turn out in my head. Sometimes I have a, an idea, and then in this case, I just was playing. So I bring in the embossing dauber. So <laughs> this is the Distress Embossing Dauber. This thing is great because it's basically just a dauber filled with embossing ink. And so I am just kind of moving that embossing ink around, trying to make it look a little bit distressed. I do keep this when I store it, I keep it upside down. That keeps that embossing glaze more at the tip. And then what I'm doing here is I'm just covering that background with that chipped sapphire. That goes really well with that navy cardstock that I have picked out. I'm using my finger to kind of pull some of the embossing glaze off of there, give it an even more distressed look. Again, don't love touching it. <laughs> I don't know what it is about that powder. <laughs> just don't want to touch it. Um, so yeah, and then we're gonna do that with the other background as well, but I'm gonna hit this with my heat tool, get all that nice and melted, and it looks beautiful on that dark cardstock. Oh, I love it. I went ahead and swatched out all the embossing glazes that I do have. I don't have them all. I have a decent number, but I don't have them all. And, you know, did them on some different cardstocks just to kind of see how they would look. So then I'm gonna take this panel and glue that down with a little bit of just liquid glue. And once that's down, 
I'm looking at my sweet little flower there and I decide I want to do a little embossing on that as well. Make that kind of shiny in some areas. So I'm going to bring in the embossing pen. That's the Distress embossing pen. It's, it's great uh, because then you can be very specific as to where you put that color or where you put, yeah, where you put your, are going to put your embossing glaze. I'll start with the peeled paint. I'm just adding tiny bits of it here and there. I'm not fully coloring. It almost looked like I was fully coloring, but I promise you I wasn't. Then we'll top, tap off the excess, heat that with the heat tool. And again, it just adds a little something. It's nice. Then we're going to bring in the weathered wood and we're using the embossing pen again around the flower. Clean that off. Hit it with the heat tool and then I'll show you what that looks like up close. It's just tiny bits of it. Take a look. It's nice and shiny right there. I think that looks really good and it's going to look good on the card. Now I needed some sentiments and while I do like the sentiments in the Beautiful Blooms stamp set, I decided to bring in the Small Talk Ideology stickers. I don't know if these are still around. If they are, I will have them linked down below. But, you know, use what you got. I decided on this particular one, and then I did trim it down so it would fit on there. I'm bringing in that weathered wood distress ink cube and kind of distressing up the edges of this piece, which means I will have to glue these down. I put them down at first. Later on, you don't see it off camera. I glue them down. And yeah, that white is kind of stark against that. So if you wanted, if you have an alcohol marker, you could color right over the top of that. It's not going to affect the archival ink either. Um, you could use just like a cream alcohol marker, which I think I do that later on. And then I'm going to use some adhesive foam strips on the back here, peel off that release paper, and then just stick our flower right down on top. I need some card bases. So I have some cream card bases. Those are A2 sized, so they were five and a half by eight and a half inches scored at four and a quarter. They are side folding A2 size cards. And then I went ahead and made another one using the dragonflies from the beautiful blooms. And I do just love how these turned out. I hope you like them too. If you do leave a comment down in the comment section down below telling me if you've played with a whole lot of mixed media or what you think of these cards. I would love to hear that. Go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye everybody.